uh, welcome everybody to our June 1st edition of uh, these crypto trading bots I've been working on for the last two months. So we got a couple of people already on board. Thanks for coming on over. So you guys can see my screen okay. Now can you see my other screen here with my editor? Just give me a yay or an A. I'll be using the chat a lot more. Uh, everybody can see that okay? Cool. Awesome. Yay. Okay, great. All right, so let me go back here to uh, where we're at. So I don't know if you guys have been watching my – how do I get rid of this chat thing here? This is annoying. Okay, sorry about all. I'm just getting re navigated back to um, – to uh, zoom and how it works. Okay, so let me pull up my uh, browser here. Um, I don't know if you guys have been following for what I've been doing on Quant Labs, the website here on YouTube, on the channel. I have been uh, working with a service for, uh, I'm gonna shut myself up for a minute here. All right, so basically what's been happening is, is I've been working with uh, cryptocurrency and only cryptocurrency. I just put up a video on this uh, today. Uh, I've got uh, examples in that video there on showing you crypto pairs on Binance that have been giving returns of 800%. Uh, I've shown other ones of giving 500%. This is since the beginning of the year. Uh, there's other uh, coins in there that I've given uh, that have doubled, not once, but twice. Link and Tezos is, are those ones. And um, crypto has been and seems to be always the number one uh, crypto, uh, the asset class that I really like. And that's all I focus on. 2019 has been somewhat a waste of a year because I dibble-dabbled in, 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 in Forex, I dibble-dabbled in, in commodities, and... I put up a few videos on here like uh, a few days ago. BTC still beats S&P 500, uh, Euro, USD, Forex, oil, gold, all of them. I mean, uh, Bitcoin has done pretty good, but there's other coins out there that I know of, as I showed. If you go through this video here, um, on those coins have done really, really well. So that's why I only uh, really focus on cryptocurrency. So that's just... Basically a snapshot of what I've been working on for the last, let's say, six months. And that's all in Python, of course. All right, so let's get back to what I've been working on. So I've launched uh, a service uh, for the crypto analytics for people out there that want to trade bots and use crypto uh, to, to reap the benefits of it with uh the uh, best exchange out there I find, uh, which is uh, um, which is uh, uh, Binance. So I'm not going to go into that. I've talked about it in the past in all these other videos. You can always go there on on the um, on the uh, the channel here. And I've also talked about where I've redesigned a lot of the bot is now being delivered over the web. Uh, I'm just using localhost as uh, using uh, Python, the Flask web uh, web framework, which is probably one of the most popular out there. Uh, they also have an extension for the REST protocol, so I'm using Flask REST. You can watch that video here. I've got highlighted, and um, it's been it, it's been an awesome ride so far. So what I've done is I've done something that's pretty unique out there, and essentially over the last, let's say, two years, I've come up with five different um, – uh, uh, strategies. So when I call this thing a mega trading bot, it's essentially a trading bot with five strategies. And in here, what I've developed is I've developed a bunch of trading uh, product uh, parameters that you can use in this file, in a crypto uh, bot INI file. And in there, you have um, like an INI file, obviously, uh, that has all these different settings that you can use for both the entry and the exit. So once I release this service, what will happen is you'll be able to sign up, download um, uh, uh, a, a program or a script. If you're not a programmer, don't worry about it, but there's going to be a Mac and a Windows version. And it's going to basically allow you to um, sign into your Binance account 
which I highly recommend as the exchange to go with. Uh, also, um, there's going to be a variety of different uh, strategies you can use and different settings you can use with this. Um, so if you got any questions, let me know via the chat. Um, I'll go bits and pieces. Are there any questions so far on what I'm talking about? And then what I'll do is I'll go over each strategy and how it works. And I'll also go into the Binance uh, world, we'll call it. Yeah, we're going to cover all the uh, strategies, Masood, in a minute. Um, and there's, as I said, there's five different ones. Um, and, and I'm going to introduce you to the Binance.com uh, website and show you how Binance breaks out all of the uh, markets, as they call them, and different uh, different um, uh, uh, asset or just different ways to finance yourself tr through transaction, through uh, storage of crypto with Binance. It's pretty powerful stuff. So let me do that right now. Um, I do have a tutorials page on this new service, so I'm not going to go over that right now. Um, but if you go over to Binance.com, it's one of the largest uh, exchanges out there for crypto. And the, the, power, the beautiful thing I like about Binance, it's a very, very innovative just realm. They're trying to be a bank. They're trying to be an exchange. They're trying to be all kinds of things. So you can see here they offer derivatives leverage tokens through ICOs, initial coin offerings, through a futures market. There's a massive spot market. Um, there's all different types of finance um, ways to, uh, they have debit cards. I mean, it's crazy what they're launching every week. It's just something new and highly innovative in the world of Binance. When people learn about Binance pretty well as they go through what is offered in Binance, people get sold on Binance as an exchange to do crypto trading on. But as they explore it more, there's more and more exciting things. And I didn't even know they're launching a debit card. I just, just found out just as much as you guys did. Um, and there's just a lot of highly exciting things that a Binance brings, okay? So really what it comes down to, there's the futures market, which is a, new, a recent add-on in the last six months. So if you want to learn about finance, uh, about Futures market, this is the place to go. The thing I like about Binance in the futures market, when you look at exchanges like the CME, the CBOE, any exchange out there, we're, we're talking about a, a pay-to-play operation and exchange to be on, meaning if you want to know true what's get, get getting liquidated on the exchange, you have to uh, pay to play. you got to spend a few thousand dollars to know what equities are available to you um, on, on uh, let's say, the CME. And you're going to spend a couple of grand per month to do that. With Binance, you don't need to pay to play on Binance. Everyone gets the same access. for You can start up a, a Binance account for a, a tiny amount of money. And when I say as a huge powerful thing that Binance gives you, I don't know, I can't speak for all uh, exchanges, but with futures, what they allow you to do is to be able to see not only your... Um, bid and ask level stuff, but you're able to see what is being bought and sold on the exchange and both sides of the market as well as the quantity. So you get a true, true uh, open so, uh, open view of what's happening on the exchange. Whereas if you're on the CME, you know, you're, 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 you're going to be competing against dark pools through the institutional uh, players out there and you won't know what they're trading. You won't know what side they're taking. You won't know the quantities they're taking. And that's a massive disadvantage that you have with trading on uh, any type of commodity futures market or be it uh, equity or whatever. That is going to be a massive, massive disadvantage to you. Here with Binance, you don't worry about that. Everybody has that kind of access and knowing what is being liquidated on the exchange can give you major edge that you will not get anywhere else, especially when you start to see the performance of what crypto gives you. So on top of that, uh, as I said, there's these uh, spot market as well. So it's all broken down into different um, markets. Let me just see if I can find some examples here. So in markets, what we're talking about is there is Bitcoin markets, BNB markets, which is the Binance coin. We also have what they call um, the alts markets. So we have Ethereum, Tron, Ripple, 
uh, and, and, and fiat markets. So that's going to include some real uh, fiat currencies, be it euro, be it the Nigerian, be it the ruble, be it the Turkish lira, be it the uh, South African rand. And there's a reason why they do this is because they know what's going on in the world right now. People are wanting to trade on uh, crypto, but they also want to have access to less uh, scrutinized um, currencies. The only one that isn't scrutinized as much as the euro, but all the other ones, I mean, nobody really seems to care about what's going on with the ruble or the Turkish lira or the rand. But they see that coming, and there's going to be more volumes coming in when uh, things get really out of control with the fiat markets. So that's why they offer this. But right now, the one market you want to pay attention to is the USDT market, which is Tether, which is the largest stable coin in the world, which is tethered to the US dollar. And that's where most of the exciting action right now is happening in Tether. And also with um, the alternative market, especially in Ethereum. You know, I've been looking at this for probably a year or two, and you can, there's a lot of opportunity when it comes to the Tether market, be it in um, the spot market, or if you wanna trade in the futures market, the only um, uh, current crypt coin that they have that you can trade in the finance market or futures market is in Tether. So you're going to see Tether everywhere. The volume of Tether goes up because of that. Also, um, when the markets either go into a flat line range or if they um, go down, I do find a defensive market to be in is in the Ethereum market. And that's why I've got a, a strategy built for the Ethereum market. So as Masood has been asking, what are these strategies that I'm talking about? So what I've got is I've got five strategies. These are very loosey-goosey uh, settings that you have control over when you download this thing. And you have control both on the entry and the exit. So I'll go over those in detail in a, in a couple of minutes for each one. But each strategy has their own control that are nuanced to the strategy and to the market. So, for instance, we have, um, as I said earlier, the USDT market, which is a spot market. Um, this market is huge. It's probably the biggest market you'll get on Binance. Um, and that's a spot market. As I said also, I've got the Ethereum spot market covered as well. Uh, here is, you can't really short in Binance. I mean, you can in the futures market, but if you're trading spot with Bitcoin, you really can't short uh, Bitcoin because they don't allow it. But there's different ways to do it. As I said, you can do it in uh, with the futures market in the margin. Leverage up to 125, depending upon the pair. Um, so that is going to, blow the doors off of any Forex uh, uh, brokers because they're regulated to, to, to death now where you can't even do, what, 6, 14 leverage. But with Binance, you can go 125 if you want. It's going to go back to the old crazy days in uh, Forex. So here when I say it's an oscillator, it's really going to only um, be working when Bitcoin goes into a profitable long side so you won't be able to short anything and that's why i call it more of an oscillator it was meant to operate like a mean reversion strategy and these two uh strategies right here the first two that i've highlighted are um momentum based because in crypto because crypto is so volatile there's two ways you can look at the market and, and, and I, this has been taught to me by somebody who's let's we'll call him an insider and what he's told me is when you're dealing with highly volatile crypto pairs meaning uh, uh, let's say Litecoin against Bitcoin, Litecoin against Ethereum, those are two crypto pairs that you're dealing with. And that is when you want to work with um, momentum-based uh, strategies because the um, momentum for crypto against crypto is better on a momentum strategy. I might have this reversed. But if you are um, a crypto against a fiat currency like the U.S. dollar or a, a stable coin that's tied back to the uh, U.S. dollar like Tether, you'd want to use a mean reversion strategy. But, you know, there's a lot of uh, opportunity here. and I'm just getting started with these strategies. Um, but when, when you're using it like an oscillator or mean reversion strategy, you kind of you want to work it in 
the futures market because um, the, the futures market is really built for mean reversion. And when you got guys that just talked to one of the CEOs today about who's on BitMEX and he's working on uh, mean reversion strategies work really well. Uh, it's only going to work in either Bitcoin or um, tether, tether uh, like like stable coin or, or fiat currencies. So those are three of the five strategies I've just uh, described here. Also, I've got a very simple future strategy, momentum base that works on a crossover of the EMA uh, exponential moving average crossover. And then we have a standard momentum future strategy. And that's pretty well all the strategies. So I'm, that, that's for Masood's question. So is there any questions so far on these just high level strategies at all? Because I'm going to go over all the different entry and exit conditions that you can come across with these settings that you'll have control over when you download the software. Anybody got any questions so far? Let me just make sure I'm not turning. Oh, no problem, Masood. Uh, looks like we got everybody in. Yeah, all right. Okay, so let's continue. So this is how I break down these uh, strategies. We have, uh, as I said, five strategies. There's going to be more added on. Um, I've, I've been experimenting with kind of machine learning with very hit and miss uh, success. Um, but I've got some good, strong players in the world of machine learning. Uh, that will help out over the next few months, year, or whatever. Um, but right now, I have settings that are specific for all the strategies within this, this is, we'll call it a megabot. And we have a default set of settings that can control all of the um, all of the strategies. So Julian asks, what time frames are these strategies for? Uh, that's a really good question, which I forgot to mention. These, a few of them, or five minute, one minute, um, the Bitcoin one can be, I won't say, uh, it, it can trade sub minute, but because of how you, to deliver the signals through the web, it's still gonna be only sub minute. But if, if you start to learn how to use uh, Binance, the API for the futures market, you can definitely get into sub second. I mean, <laughs> There are restrictions and trading rules that you have to follow, but you can build sub-second uh, sub strategies if you want. I, I've kind of tried that in, over the years. It doesn't really give you a lot of advantage, especially in, in crypto because it moves around so much and so fast. But there's a solution I've got for it. So any other questions at all? If not, I'll proceed. Uh, no problem, uh, Julian. Okay, so first uh, I'll be building these out. And I'm, as I said, I'm going to build these out. I'm going to be adding this to a tutorial page uh, once this thing gets closer to release. But these are the initial settings that are really helpful. Oh, this has got another question. What is the risk ratio of these strategies? Risk ratio is what you set it at. Um, I don't set those standards right yet. Um, I, sh I could, um, but uh, right now I don't really focus on that, um, but it is something that should be built out. But there, I, I view risk reward differently because um, this is not really like what they call a HODL type of set of strategies where you go in with Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin, hold on to it for a day, three days. These are strategies that can be in and out within uh, as quick as uh, 10 minutes. They can be in and out within a few hours. Just depends on the strategy, market conditions, and the pair. But we can go over that in greater detail later. But right now, as high-level uh, risk management, a um, couple things I need to mention here is depending upon how you set up your trading account and what markets you want to trade, in this case, with these with these strategies, it's either going to be Tether or it's going to be um, Ethereum. Just from a general point of view, as a, as a trading rule, um, when you start out with these type of bots, you really want to go with minimal amount of trades. So if you're going to go into the Ethereum market, you want to go with the minimum amount that you want to set aside per trade. So right now, you could probably do per trade, if it's experimental with live money, 
you could probably get away with, um, I, don't, I haven't checked the market real value of um, uh, Ethereum, but it's it's in around 3 to $5 US for Ethereum for minimum trading. And that's something that I'd always recommend. If you're going to trade in Tether, it's going to be different because you, in order to make a trade happen on Binance, it has to be 10 Tether or 10 US dollars. Okay, so be aware of that. So in here, we have here total number of trades per day. So let's say you fire up your, your bot at midnight. Midnight local to you, my case on New York time, Eastern Standard Time. I, I set up this bot at 12 a.m. I'm going to allow at this current setting to trade at 10 trades per day uh, over 24 hours. So that's going to be meaning I'm going to enable 10 trades at $10 per trade at 100 bucks. Okay, $100 US per 24-hour trade, okay? So that is what we're talking about here is um, the ability to say how many trades do you want to allow. So let's say you fund your account with uh, $1,000 and you want to deploy that $1,000 per day and put at risk per day. You can do 100 trades times 10 tether, um, and that's the number of trades you, you will be able to do. Also, I set up a, a way of a, the entire setup is if you have a drawdown over that 24 hour period, you can then have the bot uh, shut down. Once your your 24 hour drawdown hits 15%, and that's pretty standard when you look at tear sheets of um, asset managers. So 15% is standard, but you can control this to say if you only want uh, uh, 4%. Uh, you know, as a drawdown, you can control that at this parameter. And that's what this parameter is for. Okay. Now, another risk management that's very simple is every day, most people, and, and remember, crypto never stops trading. It never shuts down over Christmas. Uh, any, any, any holiday, it's still operating. It never shuts down. So that includes your weekends. So if, let's say, you wanted to... to uh, set your daily uh, total return target. You can do that and say, I only want to make 1% a day. Okay, and, and you could talk to all the professionals you want to make 1% a day is tough. But if you watch that video I highlighted, it, it there are uh, pairs, crypto pairs that will do really well. Um, the problem that's going to go against you is um, the ability to know what's going to move or not. And, and this is a totally, totally different type of trading. But when it comes to the upside, it's, it's, it's enormous. Like I did a 30% return in March when, when the markets went kind of haywire. Um, but since sometime in April, I started focusing on this new version and I haven't traded live since, but I'm just slowly getting things started. Um, because when I, went out to alpha test this with about five people. They gave me a whole slew of um, uh, improvements that should be implemented. And that's what you're looking at right now is these new changes and new additions that I've applied. So the other thing is if you want to uh, eat, uh, well, this, 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 this setting's not valid anymore because it used to uh, send out the trading signals uh, via email. I've done away with that now. Uh, where this spot will direct, uh, connect directly into uh, my server and it will access the endpoints uh, on my server and be able to trade off of those endpoints, which each, each strategy has its own endpoint and each strategy has um, the crypto pairs that are being watched on the server that this software will have access to. So it's a totally different type of technology where it used to deliver it through uh, a message queuing platform or a email or something else or a database. Um, I've done away with that and that's one of the reasons why I went with Flask. It's the fastest and it's the most reliable. So that's what I went with uh, for this. So this, this, this setting is really obsolete. So now we get into each, uh, str each, um, each setting in the strategies uh, as I go through them. And remember each strategy will have its own set of nuances for both the exit and the entry. And this is more filtering uh, what's good and what's not and, and to minimize your bad trades. 
And this is based on experience over the last few days or a few years. So this has got nothing to do with some just generic algorithm that will run in the markets and hope that it works, like how uh, machine learning is supposed to work or any typical technical analysis indicator will work. I've, I, I've, 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 th I've, I've just thrown all that concept out because it just doesn't really work. And uh, especially for a, a really fast moving asset class like uh, crypto. But I've seen some patterns that seem to work really well. I've got some classic technical indicators that work and we're gonna go through them. Any questions so far before I get into these? You wanna just type them up in the chat. Let me just check to see if there's anybody else needing to get uh, brought in. Thanks for coming out as well. Um, if not, okay, so I'll move on. So this strategy, if I go into my um, uh, server, what you'll find, this is probably the most traded uh, strategy out there that gives you the most opportunities. Um, I have to put out a, a massive caveat out there with these settings. If they're not properly optimized for the day or for the week, because each strategy will, will kind of work. Um, it's more defensive trading than really aggressive trading. But when it when the markets get really good, the markets are, are, are amazing. You can do really, really well. So let me just show you some of the highlights for each strategy. So... Certain strategy you can you can turn on and off. So if certain strategies are not working for you, each of these have this active thing where you just set it to yes, and it'll activate the strategy and it works great. If not, you say no, and the, the strategy is turned off. Another really important uh, metric that I use that I've come up with, I don't want to say it's proprietary because it's really not. It's called basically a, a simple weighted average. Okay, this is probably the most important thing that I've come up with that works as a defensive way to measure the overall crypto market. So in my, uh, in my uh, typical um, Redis, that again, this is all on my server here, okay? But I'm just educating on what you can use as a metric to see when is it right to trade in the world of crypto. And this can be applied to any exchange. So usually, I've come up with four of the larger, historical larger, more stable, consistently performing uh, pairs that have done really well over the, over the last, let's say, 10 years. So we got Litecoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin Cash. Okay, and each of these are measured uh, against, which will give you this, what we call a weighted uh, moving average, okay? This weighted moving average works awesome, okay? Because now you can quantify when to go into the market and when you want a certain strategy to be applied uh, when your weighted average is hits a certain level. So how this works is it's basically measuring the hourly moves for each of these pairs. Okay, and this comes from Coinbase, but it can be and because it's US dollar, it keeps it stable and there's not as much volatility in there. So what it does, it will get this metric, this weighted average metric, and it'll measure the hourly move against the volume of each of these pairs. Now, if you go to CoinMarketCap, what you'll, what you'll see is, um, uh, what, what you'll see is that, that weighted average can be used as an average to tell you, kind of like a risk on, risk off kind of metric saying, yes, you can go into the market. Now, if I go into my uh, server here, just and again, you won't get access to this, but I'm just showing you this for educational uh, purposes. But in here, if you go, well, if I go in here and just show you some things that are pretty, pretty shocking. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Oh, so it's gonna go into my server here. So each side has this, like I said, client server. So in here, I have a risk on log, okay? And I'm just gonna show you this uh, log, okay? Just to show you how this metric works. This metric is really, really important to, to how it works. So as I said, this metric um, here is to tell you, basically it tells the bot, tells the strategy when to trade, when not to trade. Um, so if I look at, let's say since, uh, May, May 1st, so this has been tracked for, let's say, pretty well 30 days. 
you'll be able to get the measurement on when to trade and what not to trade. This alone is highly valuable because you're able to see when the market, the crypto market is the best time to trade. So you'll see the range here. So for example, uh, May 11th, we hit a major negative momentum in the market, which means if you're allowed to short or if you're shorting on the futures market, this is a great time to trade. And it gives you um, the exact time when this happened, okay, and uh, for how long. Okay, and it gives you a quantifiable amount that enables you to know when to trade and when not to trade for both crypto, or sorry, for the futures and spot. Now, I need to also highlight, I've not talked about, Binance is on the verge of bringing out an options market that is right now being tested only on our mobile app, but that will be soon available via an API. So you can imagine now you're able to trade both options that perform like options. You're able to uh, uh, work with an API for the futures market that operates like a true futures market. So here, when you get these big negative moves with this metric, you can see that you are now shorting opportunity. And then it goes back to this flatlining environment again. And then all of a sudden it just shoots back up. And this is measured every, let's say 10, 15 minutes. Sometimes it's measured just when I have the bot running, but it's just giving you different time snap snapshots of when the market's moving. You can see here, on March, uh, sorry, May 11th, the markets are moving again with a 2.26. I will tell you, when you have the markets hitting 2.0 or more, you are basically having a potential to profit. Profit, profit, profit. And you got 100, 200, 700 crypto pairs to go through that will enable you to ex like literally blow up your account in profit when these metrics happen, okay? So... You can be making money uh, here when the market's between, let's say, negative one and a half to positive one and a half. You can kind of make money, but where the big, big, big opportunities are, are when you start to see that weighted moving average hit maybe one, but when it hits two and above, that's when you're going to start making mad money. And I've seen it go as high as six. And that's all based upon random crypto events. It could be anything. Maybe the institutional uh, players are diving in when they are watching the same kind of metric. It could be anything that drives the space, but it's usually when Bitcoin gets impacted. But when you look at this metric, it's usually between negative one and positive one, which means the conditions are hard to trade in, but there's still opportunity. So this is how important this, this metric that I, I've come up with uh, called, uh, you know, this weighted average. It's really important that you can use when you want to turn on and, and it'll automatically do it when you're running this bot on your system where you're, where are you going to host this thing? And it will automatically turn on the, uh, bot, the strategy when the weighted average hits a certain condition. So if you have, you want to set your bot for the USDT momentum strategy, when the market hits one, or point, uh, two five, you can turn on the bot, it will turn itself on and start trading. But this is really important because if you let this strategy run when the markets are down, you'll lose a lot of money. So you got to stay on top of this thing really good. But over time, you'll get to know the, uh, the, um, the market. You'll get to know the nuances of the market and, and, and see the patterns as they happen. And I'll be adding an, a value add-on service for that moving forward, okay? So we have here uh, what we call a trade mode, which is uh, an aggressive one, two, three, on how aggressive you want to set the, the strategy to start trading when the weighted moving average moves up. Um, and again, at a specific level of the strategy, you can you could determine your total trades and total drawdown for that particular strategy, no different than I explained up here, okay? So each strategy can override what you set in the default as well, okay? So that's pretty standard across all five strategies. Um, also, I've got a total daily return target for the strategy. Uh, so you could turn off that strategy uh, once you meet your target because here's the thing when it comes to 
very simple but highly effective risk management. This will take out the emotions of fear and greed, especially when it comes to automation. Um, when you have a return target of, let's say, I don't, I want to make no more than 1%, just, just set it at that, shut down your bot, and, wa and let the bot turn itself off and then start over at uh, midnight. I say that because um, usually when you let the greed set in, that return, you only target more than 1%, you go 2%, 3%. starts to drift away and if you're not staying on top of it what will happen is your daily target that you've already achieved will go from let's say three percent two percent and back down to one percent and that's dangerous because what will happen is um when it's less than one percent you guys can hear me okay i got a message from ali my audio is breaking and i hear let me just see what's going on here Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, let me know when it drops off. Thanks, thanks, Masood. Okay, so what I was saying is when it comes to simple uh, daily targets on risk management, usually, if you can, set it at one, okay? Just set it at one because the probability means once you hit one, you're going to reach that target, and if you're trying to go above that one, uh, probability is you'll go back below one and you'll you'll lose out on that probability and that's where the fear and greed comes in and and that's why automation like this and especially these kind of settings take out that emotion and if you're able to get one percent every day you'll do pretty good okay so I've talked about the drawdown um, we've got the daily target return we can set the daily number of uh, trades per day uh, as I mentioned here now, this is where the mad money comes in, but it's highly dangerous with this particular parameter called a duplication and symbols. Uh, a year ago, when I was watching two pairs, Litecoin against uh, Bitcoin and BNB against uh, Bitcoin, usually you could get an obscene amount of a, da a huge daily return of like, 10%, 20%, sometimes as high as 30%. And the only reason that was achievable is because some platforms as a defensive measure will say only, and this isn't your strategy, only allow 1%, a one position for a particular pair to be open at one time. So let's say your system goes in and starts trading Litecoin against Tether, okay? You have now a new position in Litecoin and, and Tether. Right, so you've set the rule saying duplication symbols equals no. That means if another opportunity comes along and that 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 pair, Litecoin against uh, Tether, moves up from one percent to two percent to five percent in a in an hour, and you set that rule saying do not allow no more than one tri uh, one position for that at that time one concurrent trade. In that position, uh, it will block all other tr uh, trades to happen for Litecoin and, and and Tether. You understand what I'm saying? So this 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 um, parameter is really important if you want to take the high risk of taking a, um, a an opportunity. Let's say Litecoin against uh, Tether, and it's now at one percent. You got an open position, but now you want to let the floodgates open say allow more positions of litecoin and tether to happen concurrently so you can go from five to ten and if they're profitable for that as that opportunity that means you're now being able to um blow up your your trade profit on that pair if the um if the pair is quickly moving at 5-10%, which can happen quite often in crypto. So this can be a very powerful metric or setting or parameter, but it also happens on the opposite end. So if you have a money-losing opportunity, 
uh, that 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 guy can also work the opposite so you could lose a lot of money as well I'm gonna try to figure a way to enable this to be self adapting um, but it's something that is a powerful in the right conditions when it works so Julian asks so duplicate symbol allows you double down for mean reversion or size up for MOM strategies, momentum strategies. Is that correct? Correct. And that's in each strategy. So it doesn't have to be momentum based, but it'll also work in the oscillator mean reversion. This one here. Okay. So each strategy has that parameter in it. So you can turn off that feature in this strategy and, and have it working on that strategy. Okay. So this is so you can see here I set the duplication symbol at no okay but uh, that is a really powerful parameter when the markets allow and if you don't watch it when the markets go down you will lose a lot of money as well a lot you could probably blow out your account very quickly if you're not careful now moving on to other uh, uh, features that people wanted or parameters which was another one that people wanted um, as I said, you have probably about six, seven, eight hundred different pairs on Binance to trade. Uh, let's say in USDT, the tether market, you can have 500 plus pairs. Out of that, that are quote unquote tradable, uh, maybe 50 or at most 100. Maybe I'd say not even more than 50 are tradable. But sometimes there are pairs that just come out of nowhere. And I've gone through it in, in one of the videos I put up earlier today that you never know the name, but it's moved 800% since January. Um, you want to be able to filter out certain uh, certain strategy or certain pairs based upon price or based upon volume. So the strategy will not trade a particular pair unless it's either at a certain price or at a certain volume. So for instance, if you know you have a no-name pair, um, I don't know, uh, one called FTT against Tether, and it's fast-moving, very rarely, but if it is fast-moving, chances are it's going to have a certain level of volume. And again, you won't know until you experiment and play around with this thing to really understand what volumes you can trigger certain pairs for or for certain prices. And this is just another uh, risk management uh, parameter you can use. Okay. Any questions so far? Now I'm going to go into one of the classic, um, classic indicators out there. Now, if you've taken a course that I put out on Python infrastructure, how to build these bots, uh, you'll know there is a... Uh, Python package out there, it's pretty popular, called technical TA lib. Let me just uh, show it to you. So if I go to TA lib and do a search on it, uh, in here, TA lib is a Python package that's built off of, let me just see here, Python TA lib uh, that has about 300 indicators in it. Okay, and it has all your typical um, technical analysis indicators. A lot of people use this. Um, it, they have ones based around math, math transform statistics, pattern recognition, which is candle, uh, cycle, volume, volatility, momentum, and overlap. Okay, so I've gone through a lot of these. A lot of these. There's about, I don't know, if it, I've played with, and you probably know about my uh, use with uh, Motive Wave, which is one of the best trading platforms out there for retail traders. And I played around a lot with Motive Wave for, you know, just looking at hundreds of candle patterns, looking at technical indicators. The only ones that really work, to be honest, are the ones that where you have less information to pass to, <laughs> believe it or not. So in here, uh, you'll notice I have two indicators for this particular uh, strategy for the momentum based spot USDT strategy built around one minute of data. Okay, so we have RSI and APO. APO you've probably never heard of, but that just looks at um, 
Let me see here if I can find the detail. Uh, let's see. I hope this is the right document I want. Okay, great. Um, let's see here. Okay, so what we have here is I'm going to look for one called uh, APO. And this is an average based uh, parameter or sorry, indicator. And I, I chose this because when I did my quote unquote experimentation with uh, MotoWave and I kind of got to know what works and what doesn't work and that's built around does it lag or not. And this one doesn't lag. And one of the reasons it doesn't lag, so this is a momentum base. Let me show you all it, what it, all it needs. This is a simple, simple, simple uh, uh, indicator. So it's an absolute price oscillator. Um, and all it needs is out of the bar, the open, high, low, close, it just needs the closing price. That's all it needs. So it's a simple, a simpler indicator that you can use. It's more predictable um, and you can use as an entry. Okay, I'm not saying you use that exclusively, but it's just one example of going right down to a highly granular level when you work with a trading platform like MotorWave or even more with uh, Python and using a, a really good uh, parameter or, or in the, uh, technical analysis library like TA Lib. So APO is it. Um, and it kind of works, not, not awesome, but it kind of works. But the other thing based upon my experience that you can use to help filter out potentially bad trades is RSI. Okay, RSI is very powerful. It's a filter to confirm your trading opportunity. So what I found over the years with MotorWave is with RSI, you would think you have a buying opportunity when the RSI is down in the classic 30, 20, and that may be so, but when you look at Fibonacci retracement, chances are it's a high trend uh, chance, especially on a, on a one minute chart or even a, anything less than uh, an hour, there's not enough volume in there to push up the price. But when you look at RSI, once it hits a certain level, especially over 50, that's when the algos start kicking in. And it really, that's when the, the, we'll call it the dumb money starts to kick in. So that will drive up the price. Once you hit your RSI above a certain level, in my case, I found it to be at around 55. So once you hit your APO at a certain level, you hit your certain RSI at a certain level, chances are you may have a decent entry. But there's something else I've not talked about in this when it comes to the world of crypto is in crypto, uh, I don't know why people don't bother with this, but if you're working with a highly uh, volatile asset class, why are you not listing out those assets or instruments that are highly volatile? And when I say when they're highly volatile, you may think you have a, uh, a, a particular pair that is moving very quickly, but... Let's face it, this can happen in any, any asset class, especially in Forex, especially if you've got a broker that's working against you. They will have, a, a chances are, a market-making desk. They will have whale watchers, what they'll call whale watchers, whale traders, that will put out fake trades. They will put out fake moves because they can move that instrument, especially if there's not enough volume on it. So they'll do it maybe once, twice, five times. And that's to shake out all the weak participants that are that are not willing to take on the chance that the price will move on that instrument. So what will happen is it can happen up to 10 times. I've seen it multiple times. Usually it's done in threes. But what will happen is, let's say you're watching a, 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 a pair that could be manipulated. They say chain link it, uh, it can be manipulated in for in crypto. And maybe it can be. Let's say it is. So you have, you're watching Chainlink against, I don't know, a tether. Looks good, looks good. And then you get one, it moves up, and it comes back down. It moves up, moves back down. And it come, happens three, four times. And these moves that go against you when you take on a position, you're going to lose confidence in that pair, and, and you'll lose confidence in that market opportunity. So as a result... Um, you will either stay away from Chainlink, 
And then 10 minutes later, an hour later, it moved 10%. And that's because it's part of that manipulation process. So the best way to get around that is basically to record what can move against you quickly, meaning there could be a, what I call a negative whipsaw move against you on the price. So I'm going to build a new feature in in the next few versions that will record all of those negative movers, those pairs that negative, negatively move against you because they're too choppy. They're, they're not trending and you need that extra confirmation to know if it's a safe trade, but yet you have other indicators that are saying so, but we need to be able to track certain pairs that are going to have a probability it will move against you. So I'm going to build in a list of, of pairs that you'll be able to watch over and say over the next three, four, five, six hours for a particular pair if it will move against you and if it will have a negative whipsaw against you so you don't you avoid the trade and if the markets line up after a certain point of time then you can go in and 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 and, and uh, take the trade so this is one of those important factors that I, I firmly believe when you look at things like no offense to the suit but when you look at the risk reward when you look at a generic strategy in this algorithm and it will always break down because of these conditions Always. So you have to look at trading, especially in Forex, can be included in this, uh, as well as crypto, is to look at these, these indicators more as a filter as when to take a trade because of uh, trades that will go against you with negative uh, whipsaws. And it happens all the time. I'd say 90% of the trading opportunities you will see that you think are trading opportunities are not because they'll move against you. And, and as I said, it could be random be market conditions it could be manipulated who knows okay so that's important to factor in when you do take these trades that i'll build this in as a feature that will enable you to track all those pairs are going to move against you or just too choppy don't take the trade and that will whittle out all the uh the potential bad trades and it'll take out about 90 95 percent of those bad trades so that will help preserve your uh, trading account Okay, so that's something I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add in. Any questions on that? Because I've already talked about this particular uh, strategy. And one thing I will mention about this USDT, which is Tether, one minute spot. I'll be adding more indicators in here to help eliminate these trades. You will get lots of opportunity here, but chances are if the markets are not working your, in your direction that you want, meaning up, long, uh, you, you can lose money with this particular strategy, but usually this strategy is the, the one that's going to give you the most opportunities because of the volume focuses on Tether if it's in the spot or if it's in the futures market. Any questions before I move on to this other one called the Ethereum Spot Momentum strategy? And I'll talk about that one as well. Any questions at all? Okay, let me go on to the uh, Ethereum moment, spot momentum. I'm just trying to make sure everyone's out there. All right, so this one will work with the Ethereum market. As I said, from my, from my experience, this one, if an opportunity comes up, usually it'll lose money. But if the markets are down, so let's say with this one with the weighted average, you could say only trade if it goes below negative 0.25 and you go, why would I do that? Well, if you know that your weighted average with those big four uh, pairs are negative, this strategy can kind of work as a defensive strategy because I've noticed that there's certain pairs in the Ethereum market will move up when the markets are down. And that can happen a lot. So this is more of a defensive strategy but it could still take on a lot of loss. So you have to be very careful with this as well. So it has all the standard, turn it on. When do you want to trade on the weighted average? How aggressive do you want it? How many trades per day do you want? What's the total drawdown percent wise? Uh, how many total return target you want? Number of trades per day. And these are important as well. This is like your virtual take profit stop loss as well. And I'll probably throw this in here as well in this other strategy and probably apply them to all. Now, when it comes to uh, Binance, you can put in a hard stop loss and a hard take profit. And I probably might do that. I personally don't think, from my experience, Binance does 
the, the classic stop hunting in Binance as compared to how rampant it is in the retail Forex broker market, which is probably nearly all of them. Okay, so when you have uh, these type of um, metrics for uh, uh, this right here, the take profit and the stop loss, these are virtual. So you're not signaling back to the market um, uh, like Binance saying, this is going to be my take profit, please manipulate me. Because I'm sure you've probably seen it time and time again on forums and my own videos on queries. Why will uh, broker A, bro broker X kick me out of this trade as I approach the uh, take profit? Because they know you're, they, they know they know that signal from your account, so they do that. And then when you fight it, uh, chances are they'll just say, "Oh, sorry, technology terms of service." Screw you, and that's usually how it is because they want you to lose money. That's how they make money. And same on the stop loss as well. So these are virtual. Um, and again, we have our uh, duplicate symbols because of the defensive. I probably would set that to no. <laughs> um, and again, you can set uh, your trading conditions on when you want to be able to take on a trade based upon minimum price, minimum volume. So here we have two more indicators, as I said. On entry you can set for RSI but another one you can set is what is the rate of change rate of change is one of the best indicators that I've come across and there's probably ROCP as well rate of change percent um, and they're really good because don't take a trade until it hits 1% don't take a trade until it's a quarter percent um, because uh, from my experience the markets are moving more now and they're becoming a little farther apart than how tight it was, let's say, two months ago. Because we just had a happening uh, two weeks ago, today. And the markets are moving more and you're starting to see Bitcoin move up because of the happening, because there's less Bitcoin out there and, 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 and there's less incentive for uh, miners to, 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 to still mine Bitcoin. So the price is going up. And there's less supply of Bitcoin. So that's why the price is starting to move up. So um, that is a really good trend after the halving two weeks ago. Um, and because there's going to be less supply of Bitcoin, uh, that means then on average, the price of Bitcoin is going to move up um, because of that. And that's what's happening right now. And that's the same set with Ethereum as well. And Ethereum will move up usually because Bitcoin is moving up. Just they're correlated like that. But there's the odd pair out there that will move against uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum or any of the big four that I've highlighted that weighted moving average thing. So rate of change is really good. Um, and take a trade when it hits a certain percent level. If it's 1% or a quarter percent, just depends upon how aggressive you want to trade. And you also have to factor in when the markets are not uh, uh, moving up or moving down or just flatlining. Uh, this 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 metric will be highly manipulated by you to know when to take on a trade based upon your rate of change that you want to trigger that entry at. So that's what the rate of change is for as well. Any questions on that? Everything else is pretty well the same after after this. So I built uh, this third strategy, uh, the Bitcoin futures oscillator. Um, this one is really just built around the moves of Bitcoin. When you look at Bitcoin and you get that call right, and let's say you build a, a bet uh, or put, put at risk one Bitcoin, let's say 90, whatever the $9,500 or $10,000 US, you have that kind of capital and you want to take that trade, you can make a boatload of cash if you get the call right. I've seen it as high as $500 in one trade. Um, and I think there was uh, a day where it moved up $1,000 overnight. I mean, it's crazy, these moves on Bitcoin. So if you get the call right, you can do really well. But again, as it's always like that, it can go against you as well if you get the call wrong. So again, uh, you can turn on this strategy. Uh, you can trade based upon when you hit a certain uh, weight average 
the trade mode, total trades per day, usually you're going to probably set this to really small amount. Uh, draw down again, number uh, daily total returns. Uh, the ratio, the ratio is very, very, very important. Um, let me just show you here, um, give you another something to look at. Hopefully this may wake up some of the people that are <laughs> watching. Okay, I haven't really talked a lot about the um, futures the the futures market. Uh, let me see if I can get to it. Okay, so if I go into the futures market here, right now, last time I checked, there's 23 coins in the futures market. As I said, they are in uh, USDT. So all, all the coins listed here are going to be in Tether, all of them. All 23 of them, and these are usually going to be the best performing pairs out there. I just noticed that they've added in one of our fast moving, great performing pairs, Theta. Okay, I can show you that. So that's a new feature that they just added to uh, this market. So going into, uh, let me just show you the Bitcoin. We're now getting into your bid and ask level. Okay, so you can do this quite easily in Python in any language you want, really be able to watch this directly on Binance using their API. So they have a specific API for the futures market. For the futures market, you get your typical bid and ask spread. So when you go back into this particular metric, meaning ratio, that means, let's say, if you know you have 66% buys and 33% sells that means you got a pretty fast moving market in the futures market with bitcoin against tether so you could set this and don't trade until you hit at least 1.5 and if you do the math that's usually going to be two-thirds okay so that means uh two-thirds uh buy one-third sell so this ratio is really important to control that on the bid and ask level and uh, no positions will take will um, uh, take place until you get your ratio, whatever is hit. So in this case, when you set it at one, that means for every buy, there's a sell. So that's a ratio of one to one. So that that's the trigger, plus the other ones I'm about to show you, which is don't trade until your IR size is at 55. And that's at a, a one minute level and the API is at whatever you want to set it at. Okay, and then again, you can set the price and the volume on Bitcoin as well for that particular strategy. So that is uh, pretty powerful. Um, this is irrelevant because it's only going to watch one pair anyway. So gonna, again, we're going through the debugging. So I'm going to clear this up. So I'm going to stop now. Any other questions so far? Because we got two, uh, looks like we got one more. One more strategy. Uh, one question from Julian. Uh, question for the BTC futures. Do you allow for leverage? I don't factor that in. Um, I could. Uh, the reason I don't do that right now is because this is all new technology. If I allow uh, leverage and it blows up, people are going to blame me for it. Because right now you can see there's power to this, but it's like a gun. If you have the power with these type of strategies... And you do well, awesome, you're happy. If it goes against you, you start losing money, you start blaming me and I got to worry about lawsuits and stuff. So I'm going to go slow with this at the beginning and keep it to the minimum of, let's say, keep it down to $10, $10 the minimum trades, as I said, of 10 tether uh, per trade. And just once this is proven, then I'll start to add in leverage and like that. So hopefully... Um, that will uh, answer your question, Julian. Uh, back test and tune these strategies. Yes, they will be tuned um, at all. But again, this is totally a different style of trading. Um, the This is trading in real time. Uh, so these are more like filters. So you're not going to be able to build a strategy with these guys. Like You're just getting parameters and you just run them against the market live. Um, so there's really no back testing or 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 forward testing and do this. So that's kind of been thrown out. These are just more filtering to enable you to say I want a trade to happen here based upon price, based upon volume, based upon let's say RSI and rate of change and things like that. Um, and that's pretty well where it's at. But as I said, I'm gonna have a value add system where I'll be tweaking this as we go, and I'm hoping to make it more intelligent. 
to self-adapt based upon these parameters and based upon market conditions. So that's how I'm going to be able to tune these strategies. But there is going to be the ability where I have a chat server where people could start posting their parameters saying it works here, it works there because of this. So I want to build a whole community around that in the future. So that's what I'm looking at. Hopefully I'll answer your question, uh, Julian. Okay, good to know. You don't want to be like Interactive Bro who lost something like 80 million from the uh, CL trades trader from, oh, I didn't know he's from Toronto. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, there, there's, yeah, he, well, I didn't know. <laughs> but uh, there's traders that have made millions from zero rags to riches. Uh, the guy that uh, did the flash crash in uh, 2011 was from living next to the Heathrow Airport in London, if you remember that story. So there's different ones, um, but uh, you, you got to be very careful because with this type of power comes danger, and as I said, with that danger comes potential for lawsuits. I, I could easily build an entire bot. Uh, I'm sure you know about the other servers like Three Commas, and uh, which is Signals, whatever it's called, signals.com or whatever, um, where you can build all these crypto trading bots on a web front. And that's all fine and good. But being able to find an actual uh, strategy that works is one thing, let alone are all the owners that have, uh, that, that have these bots available through their service, are they actually trading their own money through them as well? These are some of the questions you should ask. But yet... They will allow you to trade um, right off through the web service, like let's say 3commas.com, um, or is it 3commas.io, whatever it's called, 3commas. Um, so they allow you to trade uh, live on their service or on their servers. So they'll, you'll provide the API co token and the secret token. Um, and then what happens is when something blows up, be it a bug, be it they get hacked, where does the liability lie? Is it li lying on three commas? Does it lie on you, the customer? So there's all these things you gotta factor in it. So I could easily take all of this and put it on a server, but then I need to get your token and all your tokens for the Binance exchange. And that becomes a very huge liability against me if something blows up. So that's why I make it something that you download and it's on you because it's on your system, it's on your environment. And it's, it, you set up the parameters as you see fit. So if it blows up, it's on you because obviously I will have terms of service on the use of this thing. But just to um, understand that. So thanks for understanding that, Julian. Every time I try to explain to people, they, they kind of agree with me. But there's always the wacko out there still doesn't think so. But that's why I'm going to be making a downloadable so piece of software so it removes that liability against me. And the other big thing is Oh, we haven't talked about the regulators. Oh, because I have access to your account, blah, blah, blah. You know, now I have to be registered, blah, blah, blah. I have to be, it's just, a, it's just not worth it. And then that, it becomes a huge regulation nightmare for me. And that's one of the big reasons why Binance don't take Americans uh, because, because of that, of that liability. So, and if you're American, I'd probably recommend you go with Binance US. It would work with them, but their volumes are quite low. But that's another discussion. There are ways to kind of get around it, but you didn't hear from me. <laughs> All right. Anyways, let's go on to the next strategies. Um, any other questions so far? Anything else so far? I really appreciate the questions, Julian, Ali, uh, who else? Masood, thank you very much for attending. I appreciate it. So... Uh, let's let's go on to uh, the last two. So again, we have another momentum-based strategy. It's built off of EMA exponential moving average crossover. Uh, very simple. I could probably even supply that crossover set of signals to even add more customization for this strategy. Um, this can do well when things are moving, and it can also filter a lot of bad trades. Very simple setup. And again, as I said before, it's everything you've seen before. You activate it. What's the weight average you want to trade on? Your trading mode, number of trades, total drawdown. Uh, your target for that strategy, number of trades, da-da-da-da. Take profit, stop loss, uh, duplication, uh, on and on it goes. Minimum price, minimum volume. 
I'll probably add some more stuff to it uh, for the entry and exit, but uh, it's something, nothing new there. Um, here is another strategy that just, it's a very generic strategy. There's new parameter here. Everything's the same that you've seen, okay? But this one, this elapsed time is something different. So what I found is it can get scary when you have a position that never closes. So what I decided to do, and I can apply this metric or this parameter to all the other strategies, have the strategy uh, close a position if a particular position is on too long. So in this case, if the strategy has a position on whatever it is, for in this case of more than 180 minutes, what's that, three hours? <clears throat> just close off the position. You know, you know it's doing well, uh, and just take the take the profit, and you can set that and just cut the trade, just because. And anything you don't want, just leave it on. You can just set it to zero, or negative one. I'll uh, build that in, um, but uh, that's something that can be added to all the other ones. So when you factor in everything I've talked about so far, um, these are more filtering type of. Uh, filtering uh, parameters that you have control over with particular strategies based upon particular pairs, based upon particular price, based upon particular volume, and so on and so forth, and with that weighted average. So there's all these different metrics that you can use to control when you take on trades. The idea here at my end is I want to send you as many uh, trading opportunities as possible, uh, be it if I know that they're going to be money losers, It'll be up to you on what you want to take or not. Uh, so that's what I'm kind of building around. And as I said, as I get this thing up and running, I'll also have through my chat server, um, you know, I have scripts I've built over the years that enable you to to uh, uh, watch over um, what certain metrics do work and what parameters don't work. Um, so I'll be building, as I said, a whole value-added uh, service around that. All right, so nobody new on here. Um, I think we got a new person, Zentoro and Jeremy. Thanks for uh, joining. Um, that's pretty well it. Uh, I hope my recording is um, up to snuff and it works. Everything gets recorded properly. I can deploy it onto... Uh, YouTube and the Facebook uh, social media. That's all I want to present tonight. Next week, I am going to be uh, putting on, uh, as I said, you know I've got a meetup group based, built around Forex. I'm going to try to educate this group uh, why crypto is way better than Forex because I think Forex is a way to lose money and <laughs> to lose money is real easy. Because not because of the asset class Forex, it's because of the brokers. They're just too corrupt. But when you look at and work with a pretty decent exchange like Binance, uh, you build your confidence back that, yes, there are powerful uh, brokers and exchanges out there you can work with, that you can do well with, and they're honest. Um, and I'm going to educate people on why no to Forex and yes to crypto. I'm going to do that next week. Um, so there's that, um, there's a lot of technical stuff that's going on. You can see this is just pure console. As I said before, um, a very exciting, uh, development, um, so people know is, uh, is, uh, there's a, a framework out there called SideChart and, uh, the CEO who loves algorithmic trading who loves cryptocurrency now, um, has built in an amazing, amazing uh, framework uh, that just does some amazing things for charting. He's now building a charting uh, library that can be deployed on JavaScript. So that means uh, I will be able to um, build this service and deploy very powerful charting capabilities on my own service using this uh, technology via JavaScript, and it's very fast. So I'll be able to build out some really exciting stuff over the next, I think it'll be probably realistically a year because the JavaScript piece won't be out until 
probably the fall of this year, but this is the direction we're going. Also, I'm working with MotorWave, as you know, uh, for other asset class. But right now, I think a lot of people are in agreement. I just want to focus on crypto because of what I've been showing you among the other, uh, the other, uh, uh, just just opportunities with crypto. I've not seen any other asset class give you. So that's what I'm doing. I just don't want to turn it into a 2019 again, where I'm dibbling, dabbling in, in forex and in stock and just not getting anywhere, just spinning my wheels. I just want to focus on one technology and one uh, one asset class. So that's going to be mostly Python, obviously, um, and uh, um, crypto. I'm waiting it out to see when MotiveWave supports Binance for live trading on Binance because that I hope that day comes because Binance now have a G Java API for something like MotiveWave. So hopefully that'll come out. And once that happens, and yeah, you'll see me all over MotiveWave again with Java on top of building out this with the Python as well because the technology is just getting crazy and really advanced. And uh, that's where I'm wanting to go over the next year, I guess. So that's pretty well everything. Um, as I said, I, I'm going to be leveraging my meetup groups, uh, meetup.com slash quant uh, hyphen finance and the, the Toronto one, the Toronto Forex, um, and really take advantage of that with the online presentations every week uh, moving forward. I did put out a survey. Do you want it at 12 p.m.? Do you want it at 7, uh, 7 p.m. Mondays? People prefer the 7 p.m., so I'm factoring that in. I can't reach everybody live uh, globally, be it some people in Australia, yes. I could probably reach people in Australia for this time, but I won't be able to cover people in, in uh, Europe because, well, it's probably 1, 2 a.m. over there at this time. So we'll be dropping uh, the videos if they record properly. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. So there's that for this time. On top of that, I'm hoping to bring in some really Big name guys back, Ernie Chan again, maybe Barb Pardo. Uh, you got the guys that created both back testing, and you got the guy who created the forward test. So we got both of them that we've we've done uh, presentations with, and bring in some of the heart of uh, the the vendors I love, like MotorWave, and hopefully SideChart as well, and do some live presentations as well. So that's what I'm wanting. I'm hoping to get some other folks in there. That I got one guy. He knows he's here live. He's got an amazing spreadsheet tool that can really, it just does wonders in the world of stocks. So hopefully he'll be able to get something going for that uh, with the Excel spreadsheet that he's built um, and maybe apply it to, to uh, crypto. Who knows? There's, there's a lot of opportunity brewing right now, but this is where I'm going with right now, built around these parameters. Uh, if there's any questions, let me know. Um, and then if not, we'll just wrap up and uh, we'll wait out till next week, uh, Monday, 7 p.m. again next week. Anybody got any questions, qu 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 comments, anything? Just type them up in the chat or if you're available on audio, just unmute yourself and just jump in. Um, and as I said, if you just want to watch the YouTube channel at Quant Labs, I post everything on there. I also got a podcast as well. I'm on Facebook. Pretty well everything is social. But the best one to watch is, is YouTube. Anybody got any questions or comments? So you send Toros, unmute himself. You want to go ahead if you want to say something? Once, twice, three times. If not, we'll wrap it up and then I'll have this video hopefully up in the next few hours. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching. So I'll do it going once, going twice. Just type something in the chat so I know you're trying to get something. I always go going twice, going two and a half, two and three quarters. Any, anybody ch want to jump in? No. Julian, no problem. Uh, hopefully you learned some stuff here. Um, and if you want to just follow me on the, the chat. or uh, actually, actually, this might help you out too. Uh, no problem, Masood. Uh, I know some of you are from Toronto. You are part of the... Oh, great. Thank you, Ali. Thank you very much. Um, let me just get you... If you want to know more, get on my newsletter. I send out stuff every day. 
uh, just get over to quantlabs.net and uh, you'll get a, uh, a, a um, an opt-in for your name and your email um, and you'll be able to get my little two little PDFs on that okay so you, you you can find out all my daily stuff that I've got brewing how, how this thing's progressing how everything else is progressing and we'll leave it at that so there's nobody who wants to jump in if not we'll leave it at that then okay thanks for watching I'm gonna terminate my video now